Praise the Lord. I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Gabel Tebe, and I just want to speak to you shortly about uh, the great confession. And I just want to bring to your attention three verses under this topic uh, called the great confession. So uh, we see in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, the Bible says, he says, if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe it in your heart that God the Father raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So believe it in your heart, confess it with your mouth. But this form of believing in the heart is not just a, a, a belief or, you know, I, Jesus is Lord, as something that we say in passing. It's a conviction of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit comes within you. So the Bible says that God does not dwell in man-made temples, but your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if there's a place God is seeking to dwell, it's not in a building, but he comes to dwell within the believer. Hallelujah. So he says, confess it with your mouth, believe it in your heart. So it's a work of the Holy Spirit. So that's where God comes and he changes your heart. He takes away the heart of stone, the heart which is not receptive to the word of God, the heart which is not sensitive to the things of God. He comes and he removes it and he gives you a heart of flesh. So now when you are meditating upon the word of God, there's a fear of God that comes within you. You, you, you no longer just be, become a hearer of the word of God, but you become a doer of the word of God. Oh, what is God saying to me that I may be able to do it? Hallelujah. So you move on from that stage where you are just hearing the word of God, but now it's convicting you. Now you are sensitive to the word of God, and now you are a doer of the word of God, not just a hearer. And then the word of God, you see the word of God bearing fruit in your life. Hallelujah. So you will encounter some things. You will have testimonies to tell. You will have miracles that you experience because the Bible says those who believe, signs will follow them. Hallelujah. So he says over here, the first verse as I, as I, as I get into this, he says, if you shall confess with your mouth, believe it in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. So we're talking about a work of the Holy Spirit. God has always been a God who operates through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13. We see Jesus uh, saying to the disciples, he asked them two questions. Number one is that who do people say I am? He wants to know what are people saying the Christ, who is the Christ? He wants to know. And we get all sorts of answers. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are one of the prophets of old. Some say you are this and that and that. And But he says now, question number two, he poses it to the disciples personally salvation is a personal thing it's not about the crowd it's not about following the crowd Jesus leaves now the crowd and he said wait a second who do you say that I am hallelujah and from this Peter through the power of the Holy Spirit, God the Father reveals it to him. And Peter says, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. Hallelujah. That revelation didn't come through flesh and blood. No man revealed it to him except the Father himself. I want to say something to you precious people there's something about when we are praying and seeking the face of God there's something about that sometimes I know maybe you feel that you are alone sometimes you feel that there's nobody around you sometimes you feel that people are against you people are talking against you that's not important God says spend time in the closet hallelujah when you become faithful in the closet when you become faithful behind closed doors when nobody is looking then God rewards you for what you did behind the closet in the closet hallelujah so it's not about the crowd Jesus now here he poses a second question and he says okay let's leave the crowd who do you say I am Peter say you are the Christ you are the son of the living God and Jesus said he said these words he says upon this revelation, oh Marabashika, upon this revelation, I will build my church, hallelujah, Rabasende, and the gates of hell, they shall not prevail. 
So immediately when you make the great confession, you shut out the doors of the enemy. Hallelujah. No witchcraft can penetrate. No forces of darkness can penetrate. No oppression can penetrate. Yes, they will form the weapons. Yes, they will try to attack your life. Yes, they will try to finish you before your, your assignment is, is, is done. But the Bible says, he says, upon this revelation, the gates of hell, they shall not prevail. I want to encourage you, child of God. Maybe you've been spending time with God in the closet. Maybe you've been praying. Maybe you've been fasting. You've been seeking the face of God. I want to say to you, you're not alone. Hallelujah. The Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Remember, hallelujah. The kingdom of God does not come with observations. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God does not come with observations, but it's with in you it's a hidden kingdom it's within you hallelujah when people are undermining you when people are speaking bad about you when people don't know your story when people don't know the, the one who changed you the master of your life then they will never understand the glory which is within you hallelujah so Jesus said he said to Peter he said flesh and blood did not reveal this to you Sometimes God moves you away from the crowd. Sometimes God moves you away from the destruction. He says in, 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 in Corinthians, he says, come out from among them. Be separate. Hallelujah. Mando Robo Soto. He says, come out from the crowd. Come out from, from the familiarity. From, come out from all of that and be separate, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And another example of the great confession, as I close off, we find it in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, hallelujah. We see a man of God called Elijah. Elijah goes to the mountain. One man against many men, hallelujah. One man against the entire world, hallelujah. One man against an army, hallelujah. They were these false prophets, the prophets of Baal. And Elijah, the one man, was coming up against all of these prophets. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. So he says over here, verse number, I just want to read verse number 26. They called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Oh, Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered, and they danced around the altar they had made. Oh, Rabba Senderebosu. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. When you know your God, you will challenge witchcraft. When you know your God, you will challenge the false prophets. Hallelujah. He says, Elijah began to taunt them. Hallelujah. Oh, Baal, oh, Rabba Siyanda Raboso. They danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. Surely he is a God. Perhaps he is in deep thought or busy or traveling. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. Let me tell you something about your God. The Bible says our God never sleeps. He never slumbers. Hallelujah. And God is not concerned about lengthy prayers. Hallelujah. The instant you call upon your God in spirit and in truth, he is there. They were praying from morning up until noon. There was no response. There was no response. When you know your God, you will do great exploits. Hallelujah. Because God comes to live within us. The Bible says, Jesus says in Matthew, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church. I, so we see God himself building his own church. Let us continue with this. He says over here, verse number 28. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until their blood flowed. Don't be terrified by all these things you see around you. Don't be terrified by the enemy. No, 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 no. The, the enemy is there, but don't be scared of him. 
don't be scared of him because God has given us authority God has given us power hallelujah when Jesus raised from the dead he ascended far above the principalities and the powers and all of these demonic forces Jesus was above them he is above them hallelujah so they shouted loud and slashed as was their custom midday passed midday passed and they continued their their their, their trantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice but there was no response no one answered no one paid attention then elijah said to all the people come here to me they came to him and he repaired the altar of the lord how do we repair the altar of the lord remove the things of the devil from your life repent of your sins every distraction in your life get rid of it repair the altar of god because god wants to reveal himself in your life Repent from, from the evil things you are doing. Repent from the shameful things you are doing behind closed doors when you think nobody sees what you are doing. Repent of those things. God wants to visit his people. Hallelujah. He repaired the altar of the Lord which was in ruins. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the tribes uh, descended from Jacob to whom the word of the Lord had come saying, your name shall be Israel or Rabasi. So his promises are yes and amen. His covenant is an everlasting covenant. God is a covenant keeping God. He doesn't break his covenant. Hallelujah. If you become unfaithful, God doesn't break his uh, uh, he his covenant hallelujah was one with the stones he built an altar there in the name of the lord and dug a trench around around it large enough to hold two sears of seed he arranged the wood and cut the bull into pieces and laid it on the wood then he said to them fill four jars fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood do it again then he said and they did it do it the third time he ordered then they did it the third time the water ran down from the altar uh, and and filled the trench now this is powerful at the time of sacrifice the prophet elijah stepped forward and he prayed the prophet stepped forward and he prayed oh lord god of abraham isaac and israel why god of abraham isaac and israel because he's not a god of the dead but he's a god of the living hallelujah he's a god of the living let it be known today that you are god and immediately after elijah prayed the fire of the lord came down and the lord shows he showed himself strong hallelujah my question to you what is your confession the confession of elijah about the god that he served led him to the mountain he led him to challenge all the false prophets led him to challenge all the works of the devil what is your confession who is the master of your life who have you believed in god bless you